today we are going to see 8253 oblique 8254 programmable interval timer the contents of this video lecture are introduction to programmable interval timer pin diagram and internal diagram of 8253 oblique 8254 interfacing of this timer with 8085 microprocessor initializing this pit and control word register and modes of operation of PIT, mode 0 to mode 5 and its associated programs. Time delay is required in many applications. For example, I can tell you one application where we have to measure the speed of the motor and the speed of the motor is to be measured with the help of encoder circuit that is incremental encoder. So what we generally do that we run a periodic interrupt of 1 millisecond for example and we go on counting the pulses coming out of the incre incremental encoder and after another periodic interval so we require one counter and one uh, time delay to measure those pulses and after that particular time delay we calculate how much is the count and we convert that particular count into speed of the motor. So this application requires two time de delays or two timers. So in most of the applications more than one timer is required simultaneously. Now 8253 or 8254 is a 24 pin IC which is used to have 3 16 bit timers oblique counters namely counter 0, counter 1 and counter 2. Timers can be used in one of the 6 modes that is mode 0, mode 1, mode 2, mode 3, mode 4 and mode 5. The 8 bit control word is used to select the particular mode. Now this is the internal diagram of programmable interval timer. It has three counters namely counter 0, counter 1 and counter 2. Each counter is associated with two inputs that is clock and gate and one output. And there is one control word register. The control word register will select the counter numbers and of course uh, the read write logic is required so the signals rd bar wr bar cs bar a1 a0 are needed in order to read write as well as chip select and addressing memory interfacing of this interfacing of this particular pit with the 885 Thereafter, the data bus buffer is there which in turn will share the bidirectional data and internal bus is there to connect these counters and all data bus and control world registers. So this is how the internal block diagram of the PIT can be explained. Thereafter, we will see the pin configuration of 8253 and 8254. There are slight differences in the pin configuration of 8253 and 8254. But uh, you can see from the diagram that 8253 has pin number 1 to 8 that are being connected to the data bus. Thereafter, for counter 0, Pin number 9, 10 and 11 provides the clock output and gate. Pin number 12 is for ground. Pin number 24 is for VCC. And thereafter pin number 23, 22, 21 they are for WR, BAR, RD BAR, CS BAR. Similarly 1920 stands for A0 and A1. And pin number 18 to 13 are the pins associated with counter 1 and counter 2. Similarly, the 8254 pin configuration is also shown in the figure which is on the right hand side of the 8253. So we will not explain this. It is self explanatory. We will move to the next 
portion selection of counter oblique control word register now you can see from this particular diagram which is schematically shown for the pit that uh, this counter 0 counter 1 and counter 2 it can be selected with the help of chip select cs bar as well as a1 a0 as we have done in case of 8255 in order to select the ports so if cs bar a1 and a0 are all zero counter 0 is selected similarly if it is 1 then counter 1 is selected if it is decimal 2 or binary 1 0 1 0 counter 2 is selected and for control word register the a1 a0 should be 1 and cs bar should be 0 if cs bar is 1 then naturally 8254 is not selected and we don't care for a0 and a1 Let us see the interfacing of 8254 with 8085 microprocessor. Let us assume the counter address as 60H. Now we know the 60H address will be copied into the lower as well as higher byte of this address pins. Therefore, the counter 060H corresponds to address pin lines 0, 1, 1, 0. 0, 0, 0, that is binary 60H and correspondingly this counter 1 address will be necessarily 61H counter 2 address will be necessarily 62H and control word register address will be necessarily 63H as A0 and A1 pins of the microprocessor are connected to the A1 and A0 pins of A254 therefore these pins we will not select as a chip select logic but the remaining pins that is A2, A3, A4, A5, A6 will be connected they will, because they are same they will be used as the chip select logic for the 8254. Let us see that overall memory interfacing diagram of 8254 with microprocessor 8085. Now, according to this particular chip select logic, we have designed a NAND gate logic. Whenever the digit across this A2 to A7 is 0, the bubble will appear over here and accordingly the address lines, in this case you just see the A7 is 0, so bubble is appearing over here. A4, A3, A2 are all 0. So A4, A3, A2 are all 0. And remaining IO M bar will be 1 because it is nothing but the input output operation. Thereafter A6, A5 will be 1. And if the number across the address pins is 60 to 63, in that particular case only the CS bar will be active low and the chip will be selected. Similarly, the RD bar and WR bar pins of microprocessor are also connected to the 8254. So this is overall interfacing diagram. This interfacing diagram will change according to the port number. So let us move to the next portion. Control word register. Now let us see the pattern of the control word register or format of the control word register. Bit D6 D7 stands for selection of counter. If SC1 and SC0 is 00, zero counter 0 is selected. If 01 then counter 1 is selected. If 10 counter 2 is selected and if it is 11 it is a read back command that is it is illegal it will once again read and unless and until there is 0001 and 10 the counter won't be selected. Now the second 
other bits that is d5 and d4 stands for read oblique write in some cases it is also known as read oblique load so if it is 0 0 it is nothing but a counter latch operation okay and if it is 0 1 then there will be read or write lsb only and if it is 1 0 it will read or write msb only if it is 1 1 in that case it will read oblique write first lsb then msb see this counter it can be used as either 8 bit counter or a 16 bit if it is to be used as a 16 bit counter in that case we will require rw1 as 1 1 so that during the first initialization it will read oblique write the lsb and thereafter it will read or write the msb this is what is the programming pattern that we will see with some initialization program in the upcoming portion similarly this bit d1 d2 and d3 stands for the mode selection bits so if it is 0 0 0 then mode 0 is selected if it is 0 0 1 mode 1 is selected if m1 is 1 and m0 is 0 in respect to of m2 mode 2 is selected if m1 and m0 are 1 1 in respect to of m2 value mode 3 is selected if it is m2 is 1 and m1 is 0 0 then mode 4 is selected and if it is 1 0 1 then mode 5 is selected so you can observe that 0 to 5 are the corresponding binary numbers that are shown in m0 to m2 and bit d0 stands for binary counter oblique bcd counter okay so if it is 0 then binary counter is selected if it is 1 in that case bcd counting is selected okay so we can either load the binary word or bcd word as a counter word in this particular control word register now first let us see how to initialize the 8254 so we have to write a control word in the control register so 8 bit control word will be first loaded into the control word register thereafter we have to load the least significant byte of the counter into the counter register next step will be load the most significant byte of the counter in the counter register so it is optional if it is necessary if it is required to load the 16 bit count in that particular case we can load the most significant byte into the counter register but before this understanding the initialization program we must understand what are the modes of 8254 so let us see what are the modes before that we will see how the output of 8254 8254 will be there in the various modes see there are three pins connected across each counter that is nothing but the clock so clock is independent clock is to be given clock is nothing but the train of pulses that is to be provided with a particular frequency and this clock need not to be same as that of the clock of the microprocessor each counter will be given the independent clock and the clock frequency will be necessarily less than the frequency of the microprocessor gate is 0 and gate output 0 these are the two inputs that are uh, sorry uh, clock 0 and clock gate 0 are the two inputs and uh, gate is something like a uh, hardware trigger we are providing to this counter and output 0 in case of counter 0 will produce the output waveform according to the timers we are using in the various modes and the modes are selected with the help of the control word register so what are the different modes of 8253 oblique 8254 mode 0 
इंटरप्ट ऑन टर्मिनल काउंट मोड वन प्रोग्रामेबल वन शॉट मोड टू रेट जनरेटर मोड थ्री स्क्वेर वेव जनरेटर मोड फोर सॉफ्टवेयर ट्रिगर्ड स्ट्रोक मोड फाइव हार्डवेयर ट्रिगर्ड लेट एस सी द इसेंशियल पार्ट ऑफ मोड जीरो दैट इज इंटरप्ट ऑन टर्मिनल काउंट लेट एस अंडरस्टैंड हाउ दिस मोड वर्क फर्स्ट नंबर एन इज इक्वल टू फाइव इज लोडेड इन द counter with the help of wr bar command let us see this is the clock of the counter and the gate signal is equal to 5 that is uh, 5 volt that is high gate signal is provided across the counter now let us see what will happen in mode 0 we have loaded a number 5 so if we have loaded a number and gate is high in that case it will start counting so it will start counting down 5 4 3 2 1 0 and thereafter the low to high signal will be generated which can be used for interrupt to some other process that is why this particular mode is known as interrupt on terminal count now what is the time period that is generated by this particular n is equal to 5 so it will depend upon n into the time period of the counter okay so time period of this particular pulse multiplied by n will be the time taken in mode 0 let us understand another example see in this case the gate signal in between is made low now because n equal to 5 is loaded it will start counting down from 5 4 3 in between the gate signal is lowered so it will not do the down counting but once the gate signal it comes higher in that case it will once again start the down counting from the previous that is nothing but 2 0 1 and this is how the interrupt on terminal count that is mode zero is functions mode 2 this is called as a rate generator or divide by n counter let us understand how it will work See W R bar with the help of W R ka bar we are loading n is equal to four and gate is assumed to be at five volt that is higher. In this case the output is higher, but it will remain higher for n minus one terminal counts. So it will start counting down four, three, two, one. and thereafter it will go low and once again it will repeat this so that is why and it is called as divide by n counter we can also understand this from our next figure see wr bar is n is equal to 5 gate is high so out output is always high but after this one it will give one uh, lower pulse for one period and once again it will do it 5 4 3 2 1 1 and once again it will go that is why it will produce a stop signal that is why it is also called as a rate generator or divided by n counter okay next mode is mode 3 that is square wave generator now there are two situations the number which we are loading in this particular case it may be even it may be odd if it is even in that case the output will remain high for n by 2 number of time periods 
and it will remain low for n by 2 number of time periods as shown in the figure. So n by 2 into Tc, n by 2 into Tc will be the on and off and it will produce the square wave. Second situation, n is odd. If n is odd, in that case for first higher period, it will have n plus 1 by 2 that is if n is 5 then 6 by 2 that is 3 for 3 time periods it will be on and for 2 time periods it will be off. So naturally if n is odd and n is higher number then this particular difference which is uh, quite significant in lower numbers will not be that much significant and square walls will be generated. So this is what is nothing but the square wave generator mode 3. Next mode is mode 4 software triggered strobe. What is happening here we are producing one strobe signal but it is software triggered that is if n is equal to 4 is loaded it will start counting 4 3, 2, 1, 0 and it will produce one strobe signal. So it is nothing but the produced by the software and in mode 5 we are producing a hardware triggered strobe. What is happening that if gate is high in that particular case if this will start counting down 3, to 1, 0 and irrespective of whether the gate is going low, it will not affect the operation and in this case n times Tc will remain high and Tc will remain for 1 Tc it will remain down and it is called as the hardware triggered stroke because we are triggering it with the help of the hardware trigger that is nothing but the gate. So this is how the mode 5 hardware triggered stroke is functioning. We can also see that the gate input is triggered at this particular value. So irrespective of the gate is going low if n is equal to 6 after this gate is triggered it will start down counting and at 0 it will produce a strobe signal. That is how this mode 5 it can be known to us as hardware triggered strobe. Let us consider a problem on mode 1. Initialize the count 0 in mode 0 to interrupt microprocessor after 20 millisecond. Assume input clock f is equal to 1 megahertz. Here, frequency of counter is nothing but which is provided to counter 0 is 1 megahertz. Hence, timing of count is 1 microsecond, 1 upon 1 megahertz. n into tc is 20 millisecond. In this case, n is nothing but 20 millisecond by 1 microsecond. Therefore, it is 20,000 and is 4E20H in hexadecimal. So, this is the diagram that is showing you that this particular count 0 will produce after 20 millisecond one periodic interrupt that in turn can be used to reset 5.5. The initialization program of 8254 is shown in front of you. Before we go for the program, writing the program, we need to first uh, initialize the control word format of control word register. So bit D0 stands for it is a binary input, not BCD input. That is why BCD is kept as 0. M2, M1, M0 will be 0, 0, 0, making it as mode 0 as is, it is needed. This RW1 and RW0 should be 1, 1. It means we have to first 
load the LSB and thereafter we have to load the MSB. SC1 and SC0 that is select counter should be 0 0 so counter 0 is selected. So the control word that is coming out for CWR is 30H. So the process is we have to first shift this 30H to accumulator and then we have to write it to the control word register. So MVI A comma 30H and out 63H because 63H is the control word register address. Thereafter we have to move first lower byte that is 20H into accumulator and out 60H because 60H is nothing but the address of counter 0. Thereafter we have to load the higher byte that is most significant byte into A first then we have to once again load it to 60H that is counter 0 and we have to stop the operation. So in this way we can write the program for initialization for this particular required problem and I hope that you must have understood the basics of 8254 and I acknowledge my teacher who is professor and head of the department of electronics engineering at YCC who made me understand this subject and contributed me his PPTs. I must acknowledge the book written by D.K. Kaushik and introduction to microprocessor 8085 from Dhanpatraya publishing company and book written by Ramesh Gaukar, microprocessor architecture programming by Penram publications. And of course, I must acknowledge the Google search engine of the things available from data. Thank you so much. Thank you for patient hearing.